Hey, what's up to everybody out there? Welcome to another edition of the Roundtable Talk. And I'm your host, C Money. And this is part two of Riverwalk Fort Lauderdale. As you know, the night before, I did a part one of this at nighttime. And we are now doing part two. As you can see right here, this is, I am walking by um, what I mentioned in part one is um, discovery, um, this the science and discovery um for a lot of this discovery and science discovery and science for a lot of there i'm sorry i'm i'm i'm, I'm just going <laughs> the discovery of science for a lot of there museum of discovery and science that's what i meant to, to put but yes um i guess the workers are here getting ready um i was just crossing by boulevard coming um it was busy 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 and this is a parking lot this is namely now i didn't show you this in last night's video um in part one but this parking lot is normally full this is a parking metered parking many mean um metered parking this is normally will be packed full of people coming to all of the festivities and everything like the the bars the nightclubs the nightlife remember i told you las solas is on the other side of the tracks, which you'll probably be seeing up the while. We're not gonna go to the Los Olas part. We're, we're gonna go where we're at, you know, where we was last time, but we're gonna be in the day part of it. Okay, so, um, as I said, mentioned last night, you know, you've seen the Bright Line train come. Um, you've seen the bridge go up and down. This is called Hammer She Street, Southwest Second Avenue. I mean Southwest Second Street. Not Second Avenue, excuse me. Now, if you look over here, this is where majority of the bars and restaurants start because the Museum of the Discovery and Science is here. Now as this street is has heavy traffic and heavy pedestrian walks at night and I, that's why i told you that it, it you know it takes you you know you see a lot of traffic when i i walked a little bit of the street last night before i did this the taping and it was thing here's a ride share pick up and drop off they have a section for that and that's kind of cool because normally you know you don't have too many areas like you know south beach or any other areas that have wide shirt picks up and dropped off okay um this is what i did last night was the little stage that river walk has and i told you they don't need a stage because I, like i said over here it's the broward center for the performing arts now um Oh, right here. Remember last night we was talking about the water taxi? They call it, I mean, this is called a water trolley. It says free, but I don't know if that's the same as the water taxi, but, um, all right, good morning. But, um, I don't know if that's the same as the water taxi that says water trolley. Um, but we're gonna see more of the water trolley in a minute. This is the Society Mortgage. I don't know if that's not a historical building. Uh, we seen this last night, um, the big chair. A lot of people like to take um, pictures in the big chair. I took a picture, but I didn't sit in the big chair. I just took a actual picture of it a couple of years ago. Um, these are private boats that people have that they dock here. And as you can see behind the private boats, you have the water taxi. Some of the water taxi, ooh, one of them is smoking i guess they're getting their motor ready because you know now there's the time where they start getting the water taxes ready because i'm guessing by nine or ten oh i thought they were talking to me they get ready to load out this is one of the historical buildings this i think used to be a restaurant it's one of these i, I told you in the last episode it was a restaurant but we're gonna walk by them this well yeah this is connected to that so it's kind of the same thing so basically yeah 
Um, also over here is a diesel delivery boat. It's a boat that if your boat runs out of diesel, you know, or whatever it is, the boat comes and it refuels you. Now, we're going to go through some of the houses and we're going to see some of the houses. This is where we ended up yesterday. See, there's the over there where there's the bridge and history Port Lauderdale. So, we're going to go through some of the historical buildings. I told you a lot of the buildings that was here have was moved here because of you know um because of new developments and things coming out oh excuse me y'all excuse me y'all excuse me y'all excuse me y'all i'm dropping some stuff this is called old fort lauderdale um as you see hoach heritage center Philmon bryan house king guamati house museum of history school house and the river walk is where we just came from. Okay, replica 1899 schoolhouse. This replica of the original schoolhouse, which was built by Edward T. King, was constructed in 1976 as a community bicentennial project. The original schoolhouse was located on the corner of South Andrews Avenue and Southeast 5th Street. Ivory Cromati Stranahan, in quotations, was the first school teacher and there were nine students in the first class. The schoolhouse served as a meeting place for the community and both the First Methodist Church and the Women's Club were organized there. The schoolhouse was used as such until 1910 and was later presumed destroyed by the 1926 hurricane. This is a property of the Fort Lauderdale Historical Society. Now, um, you're not able to go inside, but you're able to look. History for a lot of there are three museums and a research center open daily. Self-guided tours at one, two, and three. Now, you, um, I guess you can go in, but as you can see inside, they have the, the seats for the students and stuff like that. This is a replica of it. Um, it's not the actual one. They probably do have tours on the inside that tells you about it. Um, we're gonna go over here and let's check out the next location. Um, there's a few houses. Some of these houses are replicas. Some of these houses are the original. It's just that they um, are here, like they said, you know, and they're setting up over here, I guess for Saturday. I, we did the New River Inn last night. We're gonna go back to that. But we're also going to come over here and we're going to see some other places. This is actually King Cromartie's house. In 1907, Edward T. King, the town's first builder, a boat right and an early citrus grower, built his third home on the south bank of the New River near what is now US-1. It remained the King family home until 1968. King's daughter Louise and her husband, Bolexam Kromati, reside there for most of their marriage life. The Junior League of Fort Lauderdale barged the house upriver to this site in 1971 to save it from demolition. Built of Day County Pine, the house is a full square Georgian Georginian style, originally one story. A second floor was added in 1911. So this is a house that was originally in another location and they um, up river this house into this location. And this is the King Cromartie house. So now we're gonna go further down. As you know, you know, and not only, you know, they have different, you know, events and stuff that goes down here throughout the weekend, like Saturdays and Sundays, they also have events as well that take place. This is the Philmon Nathaniel Bryant house. The Philmon and Lucy Bryant's home was built in 1905 by contractor Edward T. King. Oh, he's a famous contractor. 
at the request of their two sons, Reed and Tom, Philmon and Lucy first lived in a wood frame house that had been converted into the Bryan Hotel. The New River Inn replaced the hotel. This house is built of locally made hollow creek block in the then fashionable colonial, colonial revival style. During World War II, it served as a boarding house for young women whose husbands were in the service. The house is the oldest remaining example of residential mansory architecture in Fort Lauderdale. So this was actually um, a Bryan Hotel, or well, the Bryan Hotel was over there and it was converted into the New River um, Inn, which we're going to see in a little bit. And this is the Coach Heritage Center, Fort Lauderdale Historical Society. This is where I guess you go for information on the tours and everything of that nature. This is the tracks, and of course the tracks, you have a lot of hot rises and everything that um, goes with this, you know, and I say Las Olas is on the other side of the tracks. Um, I'm gonna go, and we're gonna see. There are a lot of people that are setting up. They're setting up for an event, and this is something interesting. This is this is nice, you know. This is the walk area you go to get to do the tracks. Um, this is the New River Inn, which is also the Museum of History. We did that. Um, covered that story last night. We're gonna go down back this way to see what is what. And a lot of these houses are houses that was built in the early 1900s. And these served as, you know, different venues um, here. Oh, there goes one of the water taxis, um, I believe, is pulling out and starting its daily route. This is probably the only one. Nope, there's one over here. Um, yeah, these, a lot of these houses was preserved here to be some of the oldest landmark houses in Fort Lauderdale. Now you have more, but there, you know, these are a few of the landmark houses. Now this one is a house that they use this for riverwalk activities or cycle party. Oh, I'm gonna tell you about cycle party in a minute. Ship, Shippy House, built in 1914. Residence of Judge Frederick Bleeker Shippy, Broward County's second appointed judge servicing from 1920 to 1933. He was most often sought out to perform marriages to notables and celebrities. So this must be where he resided at. And now the cycle party uses this and what is cycle party is that right there it's a like a party on wheels you get to sit down in a seat and they have a driver and it drives and you get to drink and do all the other mess and everything and i believe everybody paddles yeah everybody paddles there's one driver i don't know if they provide the driver or it's somebody that y'all provide like the, the party provides or if they provide the driver for you and everybody sits down and they go cycling. So that's who is residing there at the Sippy House. And of course, that's the replica of the school house that we've seen. Um, that was 1899. That's got to be like the oldest um, thing that's here. Because a lot of these other buildings said it was in the early 1900s. And this is the 1899 building. Um, you can actually go into these buildings. You can see these. I mean, um, they they have where you can have actually have tours to come to these um inside these buildings. I believe. Remember, I told you in in um last night's episode they had cars out here, 
um, antique cars and the cars I guess got removed because I guess people kept touching on her arm and kept doing now these buildings that we passed earlier I don't believe that they're historical buildings but I believe that they have some significant in our means to it significance to it or it has something some ties significant ties to it because they're not really historical buildings yeah this is the main building new river Inn. this is history fort lauderdale i'm gonna take a sit down for a minute and we're gonna talk about this area and you're gonna see the beautiful area of broward this is the restaurant that resided last night when we was here last night that's the restaurant that was closed and that probably still is closed because it's still early in the morning so they're probably getting ready to open um private republic that's like yes private republic bar seafood and grill um i've never been there they got to be amazing and as you know that's the where the um the train tracks are and they keep them up until it's time for a train to come down if you watched the video from last night you actually saw it come down and you saw a bright line train come and then it actually came back up so oh and if you can see you i can see it but i know you can't see it there's an iguana on the bottom of the track under the tracks right there and i guess that's a water iguana because that section sits well no it can't be a water iguana it could be what they climbed up on one of the railings to get to that part but i see the iguana right there and in the daytime it looks different because i rarely looks at come out here in the daytime like if i'm here you know i'm mostly here during the evening or nighttime when it's night and stuff like that but every blue moon i come in the daytime and stuff like that um but it, this is where it's at that's the water taxi um yard i would say and this is the rocks and everything yes i guess there's an event going on this of course um if you must know this is a sunday and of course um and the museum of history i guess is having some type of event and stuff like that yes I, I believe you can have you can go i mean there are tours but i mean by the time the tour is here i won't be here and of course the tours you probably can't record so you know it makes no sense for me to actually come and record the tour because they probably say hey it's a tour you know you can't really record you know stuff like this for your own personal use because most of the things that i do you know go to places they have tours but you know i did do a recording of a tour that i did for the barnacle state park that i did um, inside of the Barnacle House um, a while, a few years ago, but I never posted it, and this had to be, um, I forgot to post it, you know, that was at the time when um, YouTube was only doing, you know, 10 minute videos, 12 minute, you know, they was only doing, you know, they wasn't doing 30 minute an hour videos and stuff like that, it was, you know, at the time when YouTube, you can only do a certain amount of minutes per video, you know like 10 minutes per video and stuff like that you know and then it was like after 10 to 15 minutes you know the video stops or cut you off you know they're not doing like how they do now you can go longer on the videos and i and i had a whole bunch of videos with me at um the barnacle inside of the house you know but i had to tape it in a way that you know it wouldn't be noticeable so a lot of these places they are historical like i told you when i went to atlanta i tried to go to the king's house you know and then a lot of these buildings like i said um earlier they was moved here be to preserve them because a lot of the buildings that are here are in areas that have been redeveloped into new developments meaning um, shopping malls, shopping centers, maybe high-rise condos and apartments, you know, maybe streets and roads. Remember I told you when I went to all, when I went to Atlanta back in 2019 and I visited the Dr. King house, the one of the tour guide people said that down the street, Dr. King and Coretta had their own house where they raised their kids. They wasn't raised in the house King was born in. They towed down the house to make a highway, but there is no signage that the highway, you know, where the highway is at, that this is where Dr. King and Coretta Scott King, you know what I'm saying, lived and 
raise their kids. But I would have thought that they would have moved the house to a significant other location for history. But they didn't. And, you know, a lot of these places, they don't do that. And there are more historical areas and historical buildings here in the Fort Lauderdale area. This is just a few of the main buildings that sit here on the Riverwalk. You know, because there's a Riverwalk Miami, there's a Riverwalk Fort Lauderdale. And Riverwalk Fort Lauderdale has a lot of historical buildings and a lot of history behind it. Um, so this is what, and they're probably doing um, an event here because, you know, and yes, and there's somebody going inside the Museum of History. Um, New River Inn is one of the places I'm going to show you and read the New River Inn and what it was all about um, because I don't think we got to it last night and if we didn't get to it we're gonna get to it now um, I'm not gonna you know say prolong this the show for so long you know because we the yeah, oh food trucks arts and crafts every Sunday oh so there's a food trucks and arts and crafts every Sunday okay the old Fort Lauderdale village at the intersection of the New River and the Florida East Coast Railway which is FEC incorporates four turn of the 20th century historic buildings. These include the 1905 New River Inn, the 1905 Phil Mon Inn Bryant House, the 1905 Acceleron Building, and the 1907 King Cromarty House. The New River Inn houses a museum of history and is listed on the National Register of Historical Places. It was built for Philmont North Bryan from the hollow concrete blocks made on site. Bryan, a Grove owner's storekeeper and former mayor of New Smyrna was ruined by the Great Florida Freeze of 1894-95. FEC owner Henry Flagler, 1830 to 1913, asked Bryan to build the railway section from the New River to Pompano in 1894. Philmont, with his two sons, Tom and Reed, brought 400 African-American workers by boat from New Smyrna to build the to build the roadbed. The first train to Miami reached the Fort Lauderdale on February 2nd, 1896. Philmon and his sons aquatic land on either side of the railway track in what later became downtown Fort Lauderdale. In 1905, contractor Edward T. King built the inn, the Philmon Bryan House, and the nearby Tom and Reed Bryan House, thereby creating the first Fort Lauderdale residential neighborhood. Ooh, I'm sorry, y'all. I was trying to read that real fast, but it started raining and I got caught in the rain and as myself I was trying to read everything before I got caught in the rain and I did get caught in the rain but okay so this may not be a reveal so Edward T. King as I see was one of the main the like um, main founding builders of all of this every area I'm um, I think there's more houses, but I won't be able to get to all the houses because, of course, it started raining and um, I'm under this gazebo, as you can see, that they use here for probably events and stuff like that. I don't think a lot of people are going to be coming out here because on, on food, trucks and arts and crafts on Sunday, I don't think a lot of people are going to be coming out here because of the weather. When I did come out and I saw the sky, I kind of figured it was going to start raining because the sky looked a little cloudy but i said okay i mean i can do this show and maybe i can get some type of show in before anything so this is um then like i said this also where well, you see the green railings that's the crossing from this side to the other side walking via the tracks that's where the tracks you can cross the tracks to get over to the las olas area and las olas area you know continues on that so is is on the other side of the tracks but we're not really doing Las Olas. That'll probably be another show I do um, as well. And it, this is what it is. This is the Florida East Coast Railway tracks. That's who owns this track. Like I say, this was just a regular Florida East Coast Railway track, which um, only transported cargo up until maybe five six years ago when white line came into the picture and they started um using white line which is a commuter train that commutes from miami to fort lauderdale and west palm beach and within the coming year or so they're going to be commuting from miami fort lauderdale west palm beach to orlando with a few stops a few more stops added along the way and we'll get into that on another day 
Oh, it started raining a little bit more harder than it is. So that means it's going to be pouring down a little bit more. So that means I'm going to be stuck here for a while. I mean, I didn't expect this to happen, but I didn't, you know, look at the weather report. And I have coworkers and friends that always say don't trust the weather report because sometimes the weather report doesn't always act. It's not always accurate, so you can't trust it. But, I mean, we have basically did our tour of everything i basically did a retour of what i covered last night it's just today we're doing more of the historical houses and you get to see everything as it is in lighting we didn't go down um hamish share hamish Shear street which is the street where a lot of the restaurants and bars and nightclubs are at and we're not going to las olas that will be another day or another episode i should say um, we may do an episode of the Museum of Discovery and Science. That's another episode I may do. Yeah, I'll just have to go there one day because I have not, like I told you in the last episode last night, I have not been there since my nephew was a little kid, like four or five years old. I, that's when I was there. And my nephew now is a teenager. So basically, that's the last time I've been there over 10 years. So it's like, wow. So yeah. And that's basically what that's there you know and the Broward Center for Performing Arts I've never been there because I've never been to an event there um I visit here frequently you know to New River because New River is nice um the bell keeps going off eventually they're probably it's, it's probably gonna lower the bridge but by the time the bridge get lower and everything we'll, we'll probably the show will probably be ending you know because our shows are 30 minute segments. Oh, the lady is putting up, um, I guess the curtains around her tent because of course it's raining and she's selling, um, looks like dresses or, you know, comfortable dresses or whatever. And I guess she don't want to get her stuff dirty or get her stuff wet, which I understand. That's why I said London. I don't think it's going to be people that's going to be coming out here tonight, today for this arts and crafts and food trucks because of the fact that it's raining and y'all gonna i'm gonna be stuck here for a while so i'm mm, you know the show i was gonna do a little bit more walking but since it rained um i can't do no more walking just come out to river walk if you're in the south florida area come out the river walk and explore for yourself it's nice it's cool it's it's you know, relaxing, you know, you may get to see some nice things, you may not get to see no nice things, I don't know what happened to that iguana, I didn't pay more close attention to it, but come on out, it's nice, it's cool, it's great, it's something, you know, every Sunday there's a food truck, and arts and crafts on every Sunday, you know, it's, it's nice, it's something to see, you know, come enjoy it, you know, there's people to see, there's things to do, you know, you can go to the Museum of Discovery and Science if you have your kids. If you come to nightlife, you can enjoy a couple of drinks at one of the bars and one of the restaurants. I actually been to one of the restaurants at Las Olas a few years back with with my family. We went to a pizza restaurant and, you know, it was nice. And a couple of, um, earlier this year, if I'm not mistaken, I did visit a, a restaurant that I know where, I know very well. It's, you know, um a taco restaurant that I know very well and I visited and you know Las Olas is a nice area. Oh 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 the bridge is coming down the bridge is coming down I mean the train tracks is coming down so I don't know if you're gonna actually see a train because like I said when it comes down it takes a it comes down ten to fifteen minutes before the train actually comes so i'm gonna pause it for a minute so you can you know get an understanding we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break a quick pause and we're gonna come back to it okay um we have to take a quick pause for the calls um the tracks of the um guardrails have came down for the train so apparently there's a train coming I don't know if it's coming from, this is the northbound area and this is the southbound area. Now, I remind you, I say less than five minutes from here, the Bright Line train is 
here, less than five minutes away. So it could be a train coming out of the Bright Line station, or it could go in south to Miami, or it's a Bright Line train going into the Fort Lauderdale station going north. There's about there's two tracks on here, but as it nears the Bright Line station, they have like four tracks, I believe. There's like two, three for the station, and then there's an extra track for where the you know cargo train, like the regular tracks for the Florida East Coast Railway and stuff. So um, I'm guessing it's a train. Since there's no train coming, oh, there's a. We're gonna have to take another pause because I believe it's a train from White Line. So we'll take another pause and we'll be back. Okay, we're back. I had to pause because you know when there's a train approaching a station and the station is near an intersection, they always have to put the, the railroad guards down as a precautionary act just in case. And then when it reaches the station, it's the guardrails go up because you know the train may be there for a couple of minutes or so. And the white line train is right there off of Broward Boulevard. It sits right there at Broward Boulevard. So this is a white line train that is coming. And um, you get to see it. This is going to Miami. Hello, white line. Now, not too many people ride the white line because white line is a new commuter train and as you know tri-rail is the more is the train that people um oh they does have it where they you know they have it connected to the sign that it says bridge down for the train but white line is a more of a white line because it like i said it takes you an hour to get from Miami to West Palm Beach and 30 minutes from Miami to Fort Lauderdale. And when I first rode it, the lady told me it was supposed to be approximately two hours from Miami to Orlando when they do extend to the Orlando area. But um, most likely that won't be for another year, so it might be more than two hours, you know. But yeah, so um, this is in travel is more of the more convenient one because they have more stops and they go to more areas um and that's what i took to get up here and that's what i'm taking to get home because you know it's more convenient you know um this is the round table talk um i'm gonna cut this um this is the end of our show as you know it's kind of lightening up on the rain so i am gonna walk a little bit i'm not i can't sit on none of the benches no more because all the benches got wet because i was going to enjoy hanging out here for a minute but apparently that's not gonna work because everything got wet the, the rain went up the seats and everything so and it, I hear a little thunder so that means it might rain a little bit more so that's 